Good morning, good evening, good night, good day, wherever you are, whoever you are. It's the Velocity of Now with me, your host, Thomas Sheridan. As ever, I told you I was not going to give up VON, and the time comes now and again where Velocity of Now... I won't say it's required or it's needed. It's just, it's time for it to bring it back. VOM will never die, ever. It will never, ever die. But uh, I involved, when I first started making VON, nobody knew who I was, so I had lots of time. Now, I'm only, I'm slightly less obscure, so I'm a bit more time consumed, so I have less time to do VONs. But I think that also makes them special. They become like gemstones, they become precious. Now the reason for this one tonight, which you're hearing after Hocus Focus with myself and Sarah, is a matter of something that has come full circle. A kind of a resolution, a rounding out of sorts, that's very personal to the show. When I started VON 10 years ago on Type 1 Radio, with the gang down there in Brighton. One of the earliest episodes I ever did was about the alchemical transformation of Chelsea Manning. Now, it's a long time since we've heard that name, Chelsea Manning. Remember that? And I literally woke up this morning. And usually at dawn, I do have spiritual experiences. But this morning I woke up in a very heightened spiritual experience, experiential state. In fact, it was bordering on almost manic. And uh, it's a long, long time since something like that happened. My nervous system was firing and what the, the New Ages would say are called downloads coming into your system from the ether from the void from the vith vrith is the sanskrit word f- for word and like all the primordial cultures there's a belief that when you speak into the void you create the universe as in the aramaic abracadabra but the sanskrit word for that is vrith but Virth also translates into word. That's where the Indo-European English word word comes from. The Sanskrit vit. It means to speak, but it has a deeper meaning. It means to speak and to cause a disruption or an instability within the void that creates, that turns intention into the manifest. In the beginning was the word. I create what I say. You've all heard these things before. And there's a... A type of baggage that comes with our words. As you develop an audience... You have to be increasingly more wary of what you say. Because... When you're broadcasting you're like this you're literally broadcasting a spell of kinds and you're spelling a new reality from the vith and people often remark over the years how the things that I've spoken about on Vaughn have come to pass into reality have come into manifestation now I'd say a lot of that was luck, I'd say a lot of that was luck, just or guesses or just coincidence. And some of it was also I was reading the Zeitgeist, the psychic weather, and it was on the horizon. And then there were others still that actually did tumble close into the world of prophecy. But it's not really prophecy, it's intentional creation. It's natural magic. So about two, 
about 2011-ish, 10-ish, no, 11-ish, I'd say, or 12-ish. Uh, if you look, you should be able to find the the, the, the VON on this, on the, on Thomas Sheridan, the original Thomas Sheridan channel on YouTube. But one evening, the first hour was turned over to this Chelsea Manning story. Now, there's a blast from the past. Chelsea Manning. Yeah, that's a decade ago now. And I said that this would be... Steve was the producer that night. I said this would be a highly significant event. Highly significant. I stated at the time... That if people just think this is a case of an oddball or a weirdo being dealt with by a military court uh, because he wants to become a woman and it's just that you're in for a, a surprise because it's much bigger because normally these things these trans transgressions and I'm sure it's happened in previous people in the US military and other they're dealt with by the military courts they're not made a big deal of the Chelsea Manning story was an international sensation. And why, why, why was it an international sensation? The Chelsea Manning story was an international sensation uh, because something was moving, something was transforming within the zeitgeist, within the matrix, within the Maya. The serpent coiled around the cosmic egg was loosening its grip. The Midgard serpent was causing a disturbance under the sea that created a situation where the horn of Ragnarok was being readied now why do I talk in these mythical terms because this is a software a langway a lakut to use the Sanskrit and primordial terms to denote concepts that can't be adequately explained within the conventions of any particular language let alone uh, the English language this is why during the Rona Ronicles I was constantly referring to mythological archetypes spiritual traditions magical tech terminology and so on because I could not convey the emotional gravitas of what I was feeling during those lockdowns the linguistic tradition in which I came from did not provide the necessary vocabulary and syntax in order to convey uh, the nature of that experience and that gave birth uh, to the Rhone Chronicles and it also was good for you guys too because a lot of you who came to my work felt in the same way I tripled my audience during that period for no other reason than the great bewilderment that we were all being subjected to required something beyond a narrative or a discussion to encapsulate what's going on so in order for it to be personally transformed into something my consciousness could sit with, my own personal consciousness, 
once again as I've done with so much of my work if you read my bio that sums up everything I'm about I'm trying to find meaning meaning the things I don't understand meanings to wickedness meanings to oppression meanings to the endless never-ending gaslighting that we're subjected to and I can't do it using the same kind of verbiage that you get in a Sunday newspaper editorial there is an inherent inadequacy in such so I don't revert I transform back to the world of mythology and archetypes of folklore and fairy tales and the techniques used within them and I find that a much more helpful and agreeable way of dealing with this great bewilderment this global gaslighting this sea of black sorcery which we're constantly suspended in by the control grid the never ending trauma based everything that they hit us with this is the same reason why when the history of Iceland and the nature of the Icelandic people they didn't go and write a straightforward cold history they wrote sagas they wrote Eddas Volpunza saga and so on because it conveys the story in a way that presents it having meaning so for instance and this is a well worn human trait this is why we have folk music this is why the African Americans have the blues uh, this is why we have traditions of storytelling uh, this is why we have Shakespeare you on the surface the story of Hamlet is basically the usurping of a Danish king by his by his brother-in-law and a prince's ability to deal with his father father's death and how to obtain revenge upon this energy force that usurped his father's kingdom and murdered him by dropping poison in the air but Hamlet didn't go about it that way Hamlet went on a psychoanalytical internal exploration when he held up the skull of Yorick alas pure Yorick I knew him Horatio and Hamlet's revenge upon the king the new king was artistic they performed the play that showed the murder of the previous king in the court and it was triggered by a spiritual experience Hamlet well initially at Rosencrantz and Guildenstern seeing the ghost of Hamlet's father on the keep at Elsinore and that's the difference between telling a history that's cold and hard and reduces the people in it to pawns on a chessboard and mythologizing an experience so something can be created from it we do this all the time in our lives when a relationship fails people will often make up a story that try and 
brings closure to it that it has some meaning often it's not like that at all it's very dark and painful it can be very nasty but occasionally now and again for those of us who are sensitive sensitive enough to take notice and go okay there's something happening here and I have to pay attention because the old gods are saying pay attention and the constriction of the serpent wrapped around the cosmic egg loosens and then Maya starts to become rubbery flexible translucent and you're giving an insight into bigger meanings which brings us back to Chelsea Manning who was really Chelsea Womaning when this story broke I immediately knew something was up my first impression was that when he was a man Chelsea Manning before he became Chelsea Womaning he looked incredibly puny and weak certainly not someone you would associate with being a warrior in the armed services so anyway there was a scandal about his sexuality and his transition and he faced the court martial and he was sent to jail and it became an enormous story around the world the US officers to their credit were just playing by their rules but I knew what was happening Chelsea Manning and Chelsea Womaning were going into the alchemical vessel and that alchemical vessel was the prison cell and as soon as he entered into the prison we'd lost all contact and interest with him the media weren't interested we were hardly interested and we didn't know if he got out when he got out or anything and unless you were specifically looking for it or subscriber to journals or periodicals like fashion magazines or woke newspapers it was like he never existed but that's because the alchemical vessel was sealed the alchemical vessel was sealed and transformation was taking place between Chelsea Wom Manning and Chelsea Manning and it fucking changed everything not just the US military look around you today there are Chelsea Manning and Chelsea Wom Manning dynamics paradoxes distortions echoes from the writh everywhere to be seen it's planet Chelsea womaning and the alchemical vessel of the day are women's toilets and the need for insane and perverted men to access them wearing frocks sometimes not even that following Chelsea Womaning we now have males pretending they're females to take take part in female sports and winning them and being record holders so female sports has become another alchemical vessel for Womaning not having women not creating women but taking Manning and turning them into womaning. 
And you look at the the American military now compared to then, and militaries around the world, but especially American military. It's full of fellas wearing high heels and makeup, marching and swishing around rainbow flags. There are generals and senior officers wearing miniskirts, makeup and wigs. The army itself has to do promotional efforts on how much it loves trannies. The alchemical vessel, Leavenworth Prison, where they put Chelsea Manning and he came out Chelsea Womanning, had done its job. It had created a new reality of sacred and profane hermaphrodites. The hermaphrodite was now the king of the world, king and queen of the world. And we see this with so many other things. Like recently it dawned on me that the flat earth is part of the trans movement. I hear you say, what? Yes, the flat earth is part of the trans movement. Because it wouldn't have existed without Chelsea Manning. And I'll explain why. The division between dualism, between the male and the female, is not only represented on the mortal plane by men and women, and men becoming women and women becoming men, it's also reflected in every other field. I spoke about the sports and the female competitors in the sports. In the alt movement, it happened with the flat earth. What's the flat earth's fundamental tenant? Is that the earth is a flat disk, then there's no space. So, they have completely removed the concept of Mother Earth being impregnated by Father Sky. This has been a mythological and spiritual maxim going back until the primordial beginnings. Saul, the Saul Invictus, Luke, Luke, the Sky Father, impregnates Mother Earth. The combination of both produces creative forces. Sky Father, fiery penis into Mother Earth. Boom, creation. When you have a flat Earth and a belief that there is a firmament above the planet where there's nothing beyond there, and space doesn't exist, you have a hermaphroditic resolution. You have a Chelsea womanning and manning of the alternative scene that captivates people. For what reason? Who knows? But the flat earth is part of the sexless, androgynous, Abrahamic, Talmudic Presbyterianism against natural law, the sphere. So essentially, a flat earther is a kind of spiritual transgender. And you even see this reflected in, think there are other fetishes. Remember the big trees well, what's a big tree that's been cut down? It's a, gel- a neutered phallus. A truncated phallus. That, in a normal case, would have reached, if it existed, reaches its, its branches in the sky to be impregnated by what? Father Sky. With the roots of Mother Earth. 
And that was one out, that was one insight into their nature. Another insight into their nature is the whole Tatarian thing. And their belief that church spires were somehow energy creation machines. No. They were like that so they could ring a bell. And the bell would be heard because it was above ground. And the higher the church spire, the more bell the bell is rung. The more ornate the church spire, the wealthier the parish and it's showing off its wealth. That's all. While there may be a certain element of electromagnetic energy collected by towers like that, it's not anything you could it's it, it's it's diamagnetic. It's not anything you could actually power electricity or anything with. It, at the very most, it would affect your nervous system. But again, it's what what is that? What is that? It's it's a penis. It's a phallus. So, it, when they deny the, the the fiery phallus of the sun god, Sol Invictus or Luke, they have to make compensatory phalluses, and that's the Tatarian church tower generators. And they're also obsessed with why are buildings buried under the ground? Well, because they're buried because of high water table problems. But again, Mother Earth. The compensatory needs always come in truncated large trees, church spires, sunken buildings. And probably the most profound of all is they don't believe that space exists and rockets go into space. Well, what is a rocket? A fiery phallus. It's a fiery phallus. And because the flat earth is hermaphroditic, it cannot accept the fiery phallus in any notion. So meteorites are impossible, comets are impossible, and rockets taken off are impossible because they are all fiery phalluses. And then they use their Talmud of the North, the King James Bible, to v- validate it. It's all, I'm not putting you, if you're a flat air, I'm not putting you down, I'm just say what happened to you. You're part of the process. And then I see recently that the latest thing that the meat have, are doing, remember what we began with the ice bucket cha- cha- channel, ch- challenge? I said that the ice bucket challenge was the beginning of something significant. And the first thing I thought of was the headless or bornless rite of, of Egyptian magic. I summoned forth the headless one. And the purpose of the headless one during the bornless rite is to open up the gates into other realms. And boy, did the ice bucket challenge channel open up new gates and the serpent loosens its grip around the cosmic egg speaking of which remember the egg ritual during the lockdown corona will lose its shine by April 9 and all that when we cast eggs into the flowing streams well that's manifested in all kinds of ways and the latest is this bizarre thing among the NPCs and the normies whereby they take a raw egg and smash it on the foreheads of their children if this isn't an insight into the destruction of the now and the collapse of reality the onset of the Kali Yuga uh, the first tones of Asgard's horn signalling Ragnarok the babe unfolding its wings in order to take flight then I don't know what is. 
it's a symbolic moment. What did we learn about the nature of modern parenting among the profane during the lockdowns and beyond? That they cared so little for their children that they didn't bother most of them, the overwhelming majority of them, to say, my child is being robbed of their childhood. End this monstrosity now. Most of them allowed a complete stranger uh, to pierce their arms with an elixir unknown as to what may have been in that potion and did so as a symbol of good parenting of the pricking of the child's flesh by a stranger and the administration of an unknown elixir is not good parenting. Uh, the st lack of stewardship of the child's innocence, taking them to drag queen story time, calling them non-binary, calling your child non-binary is the same thing as calling it it. Oh, you profane curs. Oh, you excrementous effluence of the abyss. Unfit. Unfit and unclean. To rejoice in the ways of natural law. You are doomed. And now this... Now direct contact with the child, direct assault, smashing a raw egg on their child's forehead for likes and hearts online. The egg that we deposited in the flowing waters worldwide, what has it resolved in knowing that we have survived? They are now annihilating themselves, starting with their own children. What could be more profound and profane at the same time? You have the types of corporate and social mind control that came out of Edward Bernays by his uncle Sigmund Freud, and they accept that. And then I'll say to them, well, what makes you think? What makes you think? that they haven't been studying Carl Jung and they're not using the same thing upon us. And the answer is, they are. Of course they are. Why would they stop just at using the psychoanalysis of Sigmund Freud and completely ignore the far more powerful analytical psychology, archetypal-based psychological understandings, profiling of Carl Jung? Of course they've been there. They've been there and they've looked at this stuff and they have controlled us with it. Which brings us to the Bradley Manning story. As many of you know, Bradley Manning was given 35 years in prison this week. And so many of this, not all of them, I think more and more of these people in the alternative movement are getting wise to when our minds are being fucked with. But so many of them were like, he's a hero. He stood up for peace and justice and truth. And he blew, he along with WikiLeaks, he blew open the, the secrets as if we didn't know war was vicious and murderous to begin with. Now, I didn't pay any attention to this story until about two months ago, I saw a photograph of Badly Manning. And I said to myself, there's no way he could have been in the forces. Legitimately. He was a puny, tiny, almost midget looking man it won't be short and small but he certainly wasn't a military man material and the picture that was put out there was him surrounded by 
prison guards who are the typical big burly American lads that you associate with these you know military operations in the Middle East and where whatever. And here in the middle is this puny looking guy and immediately I went, ha, there's something happening here. There's something being done to us here. They build up this this little puny man to be essentially the devil, the enemy of all that you know America stands for, and then they show you show us his picture, and he's like he's like a mouse of a man. Right then, there and then, I knew we were dealing with a psyop. I absolutely knew it right there and then. So I took an interest not in the story itself, but in him how he was presented to the public and also looked for similar concepts and motifs in other stories and I was struck by how much he looked like Liddy Ignant the sort of strange little woman with a cigarette in her mouth pointing to the genitalia of an Iraqi prisoner in Abu Ghraib that made the Americans so ashamed of their military this is a nation that's been raised to almost sanctify their military as a, a, a religious or a thea, the, or theological expression of what it means to be an American. Americans are raised to worship their military. John Wayne and so forth. And here we have the small, and not the only one, woman involved in horrific war crimes and torture and sexual degradation of the enemy the given enemy and Americans are all embarrassed and ashamed and that was, the idea was to make Americans ashamed of their armed forces and I'll get to the reason why they're doing this later this was coupled also at the same time with endless stories between then and now of American police officers going bananas just out and out fascism Killing people for no reason at stoplights. Lots of, a burst of videos about killing dogs, killing veterans, killing old people. Just crazy cops involved in sexual molestation of women that they stop on traffic offences. And then we get to Bradley Manning. The big bad American enemy. A small puny guy. Almost androgynous. And then they delivered the bombshell. And the bombshell was... He was transgender and a picture of him in drag that was absolutely ridiculous looking. It looked like so some of one of my friends said the kind of cameras they use for Bigfoots and UFOs. And again, the PSYOP is completed on the Americans. The Americans are destroyed. Is this what our military is? Is this what our police was? Is this what our is this what it's come to? What's gone to John Wayne? I'm an American. I've been raised to worship my military. I've been raised to believe that the American man, fighting man, is the is the hero. And all of a sudden, I'm seeing, you know, in their words, you know, goddamn dykes, and you know, you know, you know, one of them queers, you know, and all that kind of thing that plays in the Bible Belt and destroys their psychology. And then everyone else is like looking at cops who are all over the place doing crazy things suddenly where is the authority figures the guardians of the American way it's descending into a freak show of you know torturous lesbians involved in S&M cr 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 crimes uh, police who are going bonkers and then you know the ultimate one the one who stands for freedom who blew the whistle on murders of innocent civilians is transformed into a transsexual what we're seeing here, folks, is alchemy. They're using alchemy. Now, people think that alchemy is, and it is, all about trying to turn base metals into gold using the Philosopher's Stone, but alchemy developed into something else as the alchemists undertook this work. They realized that what was happening inside the alchemical vessel as they worked upon these processes was an insight into their own psychological and spiritual states. Similar to fairy tales and astrology, it was the pre-psychology version of psychology. Very deep stuff, and they go very deeply in there. 
So what's happened now is Bradley Manning has entered into the alchemical vessel of the military prison cell where he will be given hormonal treatment, a sex change, and he will re-emerge as Bradley Woman-ing. And what's the purpose of this? To transform the fate and security and confidence in the American fighting man from the archetype of the John Wayne to destroy and murder that archetype in a world of sexual dysfunctionality, torture and dishonor. So from the alchemical vessel where Bradley Manning becomes Bradley Woman in the rise of the drones takes forth and begins its flight because we cannot trust our armed forces and our armies anymore. They're dysfunctional, they're queers, but we can trust a sexless, genderless, soulless life hovering in the sky, fully armed with rockets and machine guns to do our policing, to do our military work to do our cold-blooded killing. Bradley Manning is the alchemical engagement to transform the American psyche away from human military and towards technological, transhumanist military. What could be more profound and profane at the same time? There isn't a day that I don't thank the gods for being who I am. There isn't a day that doesn't pass where I don't give salutation to the old ones and the ancestors for making me an outsider, for making me a freak at school who was different than the other kids, to make me feel like I never really fed, fit in with my family and my social circle to make me run from Ballymun as far as I could. I know you're all the same, listen to me. I know you've all lived the same life I've lived. You always, most of you are black sheep because you were meant to be. You were an evolutionary novelty. You were supposed to be a novelty. You were supposed to break the mold, literally. And what are they doing when they crash those eggs into the foreheads of their own children? They're breaking the mold that we created to get us out of it. About six or seven years ago, I used the metaphor, I want to build a long ship. I want to build a long ship and sail away from this. We all have our long ships now. We've been sailing away since about March 2020. And we're like Lot's wife, except we're not being turned to pillars of salt. We can look behind us, and what we see we can hardly believe. The parent attacking their own child, first with the biopharma hitman, and now with the profane inverse of the cosmic egg. There is no serpent. The plain of Vigrid is collapsing below the sea. And we are sailing away in our longships into the new reality. And this is because when we were growing up, we were freaks. We were outsiders. We didn't fit in. And when you see that now, so much of your life finds individuation no matter what age you are. I can still remember so clearly walking into the Bamba second-hand paperback bookshop when I was about 10 in Fisbury Shopping Centre on the north side of Dublin where I lived and seeing the piles of Dennis Wheatley, Lovecraft, red paperbacks and just barely based on a cover or a title bringing them home and reading them and saying, is this magic stuff real? And then occasionally now and again, some paperback called Ritual Magic 
in the in the modern age with a picture of some half naked hippie chick on the cover sitting in a pentagram holding a dagger or holding a skull all of that led me and led you to where we are now that was our transformative moments watching horror films and saying there's something deeper going on here than just a guy biting a woman with his fangs or a, a mad professor creating a man from parts of other humans you may not had had the articulation to express it when you were young but you watched it saying to yourself there's something here that means something when you watched the movie Picnic at Hanging Rock when you were growing up late at night maybe your parents were out at bingo or down the pub and you were sitting at home and you heard Zamfir's pan pipes playing as the soundtrack to that Peter Weir movie when the young girls are walking through the aborigine sacred rocks in Australia in Victorian times you knew there was something to this you knew that this meant something more than just some girls vanishing into an ancient rock's face while pan pipes played you knew there was something when you watched all those Harama films when you watched all those Quatermass films even things like the Twilight Zones in America they were very much full of those kinds of ideas that okay it's drama okay it's entertainment sure it's show business uh, but there's something here and that was the same thing that was expressed by Shakespeare in stories such as Hamlet Julius Caesar and the Merchant of Venice beyond the confines of the slings and fortunes of everyday life the fairy queen Oberon and Maeve of Prospero's books exist just beyond that Midsummer Night's Dream we entered the Midsummer Night's Dream when we picked up our first magic book and even some of the youngest books as children like the Little Prince they affected us they affected us like the cartoon version of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow there was something about it the great pumpkin patch Charlie Brown there was something about it they were TV programs but they transformed us this is something that myself and Sarah talk about all the time and will be at our upcoming Hocus Focus book we talk about these things all the time they are transformative they are transformative moments in the greater scheme of things in terms of your life and how you are they are the alchemical engagement within and the alchemical vessel was your consciousness going into a place with your education your family background your culture your race and religion had never taken you because we'd lost our shamanic and ancient mystical traditions it was the pagan calling it was the shaman of the ancient ancestors calling that found a sense of connectivity when we went to ancient sites when we went to places and saw events that were part of this chemical alchemical transformation in other words we didn't have an outside force do it for us we did it for ourselves and that's why I feel very very blessed to be who I am right now and I feel very very blessed to be in the company of you guys who are also in the same way like Bilbo said to be amongst the company of most excellent hobbits we are like that the tribe is real we don't have rules regulations or anybody telling anybody what to do but we have a beautiful coming together a osmosis we are like 
lights in the sky that twinkled and noticed each other and then began twinkling in harmonic sympathy. That's what's going on. Because we notice things. We're still noticing things. We're seeing the profound in everything. Hence why so many of us who've grown up on the Lovecraftian mythos are now seeing that fully resolved. Today, for God's sake, I saw an inflatable swimming pool. That sh- The illustration on the box showed little kids playing in the inflatable swimming pool. And what did they show on the water? Octopus tentacles. They didn't show dolphins like they normally show. They showed octopus tentacles. Very Cthulhu, Lovecraftian, eldritch-like octopus ki- tentacles coming out where all these children were playing it's not a coincidence Coincidence, it's a resolving the stuff resolves itself the universe says hey look look we were paying attention to you this is, this is a synchronicity and this synchronicity is saying to you you are in the right place you are watching correctly you are observing you are building your long ship to freedom and this is why so many of us, and I'm not putting down those of you who were forced to do it, or, had, or did it out of love for your, to protect your family, didn't take the needle craft. Because we, we saw it as an in, inhibitor. And also we were too busy doing other things, like building our longship. Watching for synchronicities. And I can't believe sometimes the level of conversation that takes place on my Facebook wall. The it's some of the most profound and in depth spiritual discussions anywhere. My God, I I, I some night some days I I look I read what you guys have written. I'm not going to name anybody because you all know who you are and you're all good anyway. But and I'm like my God, I'm I'm so privileged to have found these people in my world. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't an accident. Just like it isn't an accident following the egg ritual. That the profane cores of the void are smashing eggs into their own children's foreheads. It's not an accident. We're we're building reality, guys. And that's what the whole thing, remembering that Chelsea Manning, Chelsea Womaning thing did for me. It made me realise to some degree I'm hacking through this matrix and surviving. We all are in our own way. And we're all, I see that so many of us are now so good at seeing something. And it's not the kind of truth or like, you know, pound shop theosophy of like, sounds like, must be. I can see there's a greater sophistication with my audience than just about any audience out. I'm absolutely astounded some days by the level of sophistication of the people who follow my work or are joining me in my quest that's really what we're doing and honored and i'm amazed by it and i learn all the time i learn new things all the time from you guys the comments on youtube videos and the people i deal with all the time i learn things that's what it's like now the tribe is like the the meeting of the Druids in Grinona Aelok in the mountain in Donegal. No one had to raise a voice to be heard. The acoustics were so perfect that someone had to just speak and someone on the other side would hear them. There was no need to shout. As the serpent around the cosmic egg loosens its grip. Good night. Thank you. Ave Lucifer and long live the horn gods.